Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today at the Entheos Academy for Optimal Living. My name is Matt Cook, and today we will be joined by Ashley Turner for a great class on how to begin a daily meditation practice. Ashley Turner, MA, brings a fresh approach to yoga as a modern day psychotherapist with a soulful bent on, uh, on celebrating the body's wisdom and inner spirit, elevating personal growth as a lifestyle. So why I'm excited about this class, so excited, Ashley will be doing a virtual conference with us April 21st through the 25th called Meditation 101. Ashley is a Midwestern ball of light and we're so grateful <laughs> to have her on as part of the Entheos Professordom. So thank you so much for joining us, Ashley, Yay. and let's have an incredible class. <laughs> I love, thank you so much. I'm so happy. Thank you, Matt, for all the work that you're doing in the back end of this and Entheos Academy. Um, such an amazing opportunity to collaborate with you guys, giving me this platform. I'm really, really grateful. I'm going to add that to my bio, Midwestern Ball of Light. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you all so much for joining us wherever you are, whenever you're watching this. Um, my name is Ashley Turner, and I have been teaching yoga and meditation for 14 years in Santa Monica, California. And um, after teaching for about seven years, I decided to go back and get my master's in psychology. So I'm finishing the process of getting licensed right now as a psychotherapist, really with a focus on mind-body psychology and the integration of yoga, meditation, and Western science of neuroscience, psychotherapy, psychology, um, so that's where my sweet spot is, that integration of science and spirituality. And that's really the reason behind this, uh, this class today, Meditation 101, how to start a meditation practice, as well as the free virtual conference that we're going to be offering, Meditation 101, and that's April 21st to the 25th. And we have several more classes coming here, free webinars on how to start meditating. And the reason that I you know, was so passionate when Entheos and I started talking about what content I really wanted to bring forward, for sure this was it. And for years I've been wanting to launch meditation on a bigger platform. And it's great because I really see a tidal shift, you know, in the unconscious and media. There's a lot more meditation out there, free meditation courses. Oprah and Deepak do several amazing free courses online. Yeah. And um, I just saw another one come through my inbox the other day. So the first thing that I recommend to any of my students or my clients, my psychotherapy clients, for pretty much any challenge that they might be facing in life is to start meditating. And the reason is because it is so effective, the benefits are so profound, it anchors us into our center and really helps us cut through all the topsoil, you know, neurosis and, and all the different voices in our heads that can really cloud um, our judgment. It helps us to get clear. It helps us to master our emotions. It's been scientifically proven to help obviously reduce stress, anxiety, depression, really help with addiction. So it's kind of meditation for me. I look at it as the root of getting underneath the source of what's creating our suffering in the first place which is the nature of our mind and how we're thinking and how we're choosing to write the stories in our head about what's actually going on. So this practice today is in this class today is really about helping you get started as meditation because the first thing that I hear from all my students and clients when I tell them to start a meditation practice is I don't know how to meditate. And they really seem overwhelmed. So I really want to demystify the practice of meditation. We're going to break it down. And these are 10 of the greatest tips to really help you start a daily meditation practice. So the first tip is get comfortable. And this is so important because we really tend to overcomplicate the practice of meditation and get a little bit um, overwhelmed. And it can seem like a very mystical, abstract thing, like there's some great science around meditating. So I want to just give you permission to simplify the whole practice. And finding a comfortable seat is one of the most important things. It's really the starting point of your meditation. So typically, and we'll get into the details of it a little bit, um, <clears throat> a little bit later in one of the next steps, but you want to basically 
sit and eat. sometimes you can lie down, but I really recommend sitting up. Um, if you really have a back issue or something like that, of course you can lie down. But uh, if any possibility to sit up, it's just better to have a tall straight spine and you're less likely to fall asleep. And so what we're seeking in meditation is to have a very poised and alert awareness. So you're not fading off and you're not spacing out. You're really connecting, you're staying, and you're, and you're training the mind into mindfulness. You're really first and foremost training the mind to focus. And then once we move through focus, you can start to get into a more spacious quality. But the first step is creating focus. In yoga, it's called dharana, and dharana means concentration. So when you sit up, it's helpful to be focused and concentrate um, versus when you lie down. But make sure you're comfortable. So if you're really flexible, you can sit on the floor, but it's, it's really important to sit so that your hips are higher, like four inches higher, four to six inches higher than your knees. So it's great to sit on a cushion if you want to, you know, invest in a little meditation cushion. You can just fold up a blanket and put it down under your sit bones. Um, there's meditation benches that you can get. Uh, or just a bolster, a nice firm pillow. When you sit with your hips higher than your knees, your pelvis is going to tilt forward slightly, which will help the alignment of your spine. And we want to keep the spine nice and long. It will also help open the circulation through the hip sockets so your knees and your feet, your legs don't go to sleep and you don't experience quite as much pain in um, the knees, which can be an issue for people. If you're not that flexible, just simply sit on a chair like I'm sitting on right now. You sit in a chair that's comfortable so you have back support and you want to uncross your legs so both feet are on the floor and you just have a nice, firm, symmetrical foundation. So get comfortable. Um, if you know, Get the room temperature nice. If you want a blanket, I usually meditate with a meditation shawl, which is just something that I picked up in India and it's really common to help sort of focalize the energy inward. I actually like to wrap it around my head, like a, um, a shawl over a scarf over my head, just because it helps for me internalize my focus. So get comfortable. It's nothing, nothing too detailed, just nice and easy, sit comfortably. Second tip is same bat time, same bat place. And this is really important. Um, the reason is that we want to create the most conducive environment for your mind to focus, to let go, to open up. And when, in essence, we're triggering the mind out of its normal frontal lobe thinking, analytical processing into a more spacious awareness. So you're also moving from the left brain, logical, linear, linguistic brain, to more of the right brain activity, nonlinear, intuitive, um, creative mind, when you create a little ritual, a little routine, so it, it's as simple as sitting maybe first thing in the morning, that's always recommended. It's actually a little bit easier in a lot of ways to sit early in the morning because all of your mind activity hasn't started yet. Um, actually, in the yoga tradition, the best time to meditate metaphysically in the environment is about 4 a.m. That's probably a little early for most of you, so you don't have to get up at 4 a.m., but just know that literally the vibrations, the molecules, the electronic field is quieter early in the morning, so there's not all the buzzing of traffic, even the, um, the EMFs that can affect us with all the electronics that we're surrounded by. So the earlier in the morning, the better. It's just more conducive for a more alpha state of awareness. But what happens when you create a little ritual, in other words, consistency, same time, same place. So you want to set a specific amount of time, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, but also set a specific space where you meditate. And I mean, personally, I have a whole altar right in front of my bed. It's, it literally runs almost the length of the wall. So you don't have to do anything that elaborate, but you can, it can be just as simple as a little picture, a, a rock, anything that's meaningful to you. Maybe if you're on vacation or you're traveling, just a simple candle, one tea light that's lit, 
Um, anything that you place, that, that you associate, your mind associates with, now I'm moving into a meditative state of awareness. Now I'm moving into, I'm, I'm shifting my awareness into a different frame of mind. So I'm not sitting down at my desk. I'm not running around. I'm not looking at my phone. That's another tip that is not on our top 10 list. But if you're going to meditate in the morning, I highly recommend do not check your phone. Do not turn on the electronics. Do not let your mind start to trip into that um, analytical uh, framework. Stay in a really open awareness you know, before you start meditating. So get up, do your little ritual, come and sit down first. As, as close to when you wake up as possible is really helpful. So develop a little routine around your meditation. Um, set a very specific place. Again, in your house, if you have other people that you live with, your family, children, uh, you know, spouse, whatever, they don't even have to know where your meditation place is. Maybe they do, and that's a really nice thing to literally dedicate, this is my corner for meditation. Um, but if you don't have that much space, again, it can just be right by the side of your bed, light a little candle, and that's where you sit. So when you keep it routine, it, it triggers the mind into um, a ritualized or meditative awareness. So when we create ritual and routine, as we know from child development, routine helps to train the mind. So you're, soon your unconscious will start to kick in, oh, I'm going to sit into meditation. And it will help you shift more naturally into that alpha state. Same bad time. Same bat place, that's number two. Number three, going back to our posture, is to sit tall. So we talked about this a little bit, but you want to maintain a nice long spine. Now the reason for this is we could, we could get into the energetics of the subtle body, but you wanna keep your circulation moving. When you lengthen the spine, just feel the tail and the crown of the head pulling away from each other you create more alertness. Just simply more circulation is moving. Um, it will help you stay more alert. When you look at the subtle body, um, the chakra system and the nadhis, which are the meridians of how energy and consciousness move in our body, you want to align the chakras and keep them open. So literally more energy, more <clears throat> of the electrical uh, charges that are moving through your neural pathways are able to be complete. They're able to, they're open, the channels are open. So sitting tall, and you might notice in your meditation that you'll start to hunch over and your shoulders start to round. And when you notice that, just lengthen up, feel the crown of the head and the tail lengthen, and maybe even feel from the sternum. I think of Pinocchio, like on, on the strings and just like something's pulling me upwards. So a good word to think of is dignity, or I use the word, um, sitting in your throne, like you're sitting in a throne. How would you sit in a throne? Now, over time, if you have, again, if you have um, <clears throat> back issues or you might not be as strong and flexible in your spine, you can sit against a wall. You can sit in a nice, tall, um, straight back chair. That's really helpful. And then over time, the muscles of your spine uh, surrounding your spinal column, the erector muscles, will strengthen. And so it will become easier and easier to sit tall, eventually even cross-legged, um, and just play with it. So do your best. So number three, sit tall. Posture 101, sit tall, lengthen. Number four, start small. So in our meditation practice, we again often have the tendency of feeling really overwhelmed like i don't know how to meditate there's so many kinds of meditation do i start with a mantra do i start with um beads prayer beads do what am i supposed to focus on so just give yourself permission to start small baby steps i was actually on an interview yesterday with one of the great meditation teachers in the country um, her name is Sally Kempton, and that's a great resource for those of you that want to start meditating. Please check out her website, Sally Kempton, K E M P T O N dot com. She has a lot of free meditations on there and uh, a lot of other telecourses that you can buy as well. She's an amazing, amazing, revered, beloved teacher. And she was saying that, you know, she actually wrote a book called Meditation for the Love of It. And just in our conversation yesterday, she really revolutionized 
my perception of meditation. And she was talking about meditation is relationship. Meditation is relationship to yourself. So give yourself permission, you know, to be a beginner. Give yourself permission to start small, to experiment. And she's taken a whole turn in her meditation teaching of bringing in playfulness. And so she was saying that although she is a traditionalist in many ways, she was a monk for 20 years, living in India with her guru, um, and she also believes in the evolution of meditation and spirituality um, yoga. And so she was saying, you know, you can experiment. You can have a playfulness in your practice. Um, and a good guideline for this is start with one kind of meditation, practice it for a week. Start with another kind of meditation, maybe practice that for a week. See which one fits. You know, there's several different ones. So very simply, here's three that you can choose from. You can just start by focusing on your breath. So you just sit, get in your posture, set your place and time, and then sit down. When I say start small, you want to start with a small amount of time. So maybe that's 10 minutes a day. If 10 minutes seems overwhelming, then you just start with five minutes a day. And I guarantee everyone has five minutes out of their day that they can carve. Um, so five minutes in the morning, it's not a lot of time. So just set your alarm for five minutes earlier before you usually get up. And then you set, you set that time. Now there's a lot of uh, great tools that you can use to help you. I love on my, on my iPhone, I have, uh, there's an app called Insight Timer, which I absolutely love. And it's basically like, I'm going to try to find it here for you guys. It's such a beautiful app. It's, it's basically Tibetan bells, Tibetan bowls. I don't know if you can see it. So you just set the time. You can choose from all different Tibetan bowls, whatever sound you most prefer. Super easy. Set it for five minutes and then close your eyes. So set a timer so you're not wondering what time it is, opening your eyes, looking at your watch, distracting yourself. It's five minutes, ten minutes. Start there. And then each week you can add on one minute to your practice. So you sit every day. The second week, it becomes six minutes. The third week, seven minutes, etc., until you build up to 30 minutes. 30 minutes is a really uh, good, solid foundation for your practice. Um, you can go longer. Uh, and actually what Sally was saying is that there is no one-size-fits-all, as we know. So for some of us, we might be able to slip into that sort of meditative awareness in 15 minutes. For some of us, 20 minutes, it will find your, you'll find your natural breaking point. You'll find your natural fit where you will, your mind state will begin to shift. For me, 30 minutes is a really good amount of time. I feel like I really drop in. I really clear thoughts. Um, everything really softens and opens up into this more expansive awareness. So my time is 30 minutes, but over, you know, you're experimenting you're playful, you're having fun in your practice, fall in love with your meditation practice, um, whatever time really fits for you. Maybe you can do 45 minutes or an hour. Radical, I know. But um, see in the course of um, the weeks to come what feels like it fits you. But start small. Um, so a, here, a couple basic meditation practices. Number one, when you sit for five, 10 minutes, just focus on your breath. You want to close your eyes. Think of it as an inward-focused awareness. You're turning your attention inward, and you can very simply just observe your breath. And we'll talk about this a little bit later and why it's so effective. But just observing, breathing in, and you can even name it if it's helpful for you. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Or if you're working with the breath, some people like to count the breath. So inhale one, exhale one. Inhale two, exhale two. Again, this is a this is a concentration technique. So you're building, you're you're honing the mind, focusing on one point. Um, a second meditation that might work for you is just sitting. It's a Buddhist practice. It's called just sitting. That you're just sitting still for five minutes. You're just sitting quietly with your eyes closed for ten minutes, whatever your practice is. And just notice what comes up, observe, let it rise, let it fall away. 
Notice that everything rises and falls away. So you have the breath meditation, or you have just sitting meditation, or perhaps a third option would be if you're more kinetic and you're more somatic in your body, you can focus on what's called the Vipassana meditation, which is just observing sensation in your body. And it, it would be you just sitting for five minutes, 10 minutes, and just watching sensation. And sensation, like thought, like breath, rises and falls away. It rises, it changes, it moves into something else, and it falls away. So those are three options just to start with to give you um, a, little, a little smorgasbord there. So number five, now that you have these three different practices to choose from, be nice to yourself. And I mean be really, really, really nice to yourself. So the practice of meditation is really a mirror. It's, again, it's a relationship, and it's a relationship with yourself. So there's this adage I'm sure many of you have heard, the way that you do one thing in your life is the way that you do everything in your life. So our meditation can become like a blank canvas where we get to observe what our thought patterns are. What are the habitual patterns that come up for you? And for many of us, the greatest war that we're fighting is inside our own mind, for most of us, probably. So we're up against these negative voices, self-criticism, insecurity, self-beat, as one of my teachers calls it, um, just the over-analysis, the addictive quality of our mind, um, Sally Kempton called it a Byzantine mind, which I thought was such a great descriptor, that it's just this intricate, very dense, obsessive thinking mind, this Byzantine, you know, intertwining mind that's hard to open up. And that's the nature of our mind. Um, that's the way that the mind is built. It has a very specific function and it helps us think and get through the world but we want to train the mind. We want to begin to harness the power. I look at it like um, a dam on a river. If that river of consciousness is just flowing open and ending uh, endlessly, if a river doesn't have banks, it's not effective. It just dissipates into the soil and dissolves. If you place the banks on the river, or if you even place a dam on the river, it focuses all of the energy and harnesses the power of a river so much so that we can even create electricity from it, right? So it's the same in your mind. You want to build some boundaries and the meditation practice is anchoring the mind and focalizing the mind, harnessing it and directing it towards one point. So you really um, begin to choose where you pay attention. You can begin to choose your thoughts. So there's also this great um, quote, uh, just because you think a thought doesn't mean it's true. So in our meditation practice, we want to just observe, oh, this is this thought. Oh, now I'm thinking um, about this person, or I'm worried about that person. So be nice to yourself. This is just observation. You want to create more and more neutrality, more and more spaciousness, compassion, acceptance, and unconditional love. So surrender, the practice of meditation is about surrendering to exactly what is happening right here, right now. So just continue to practice self-love, self-compassion, self-forgiveness, observing the nature, neurotic nature of the mind, patience. So be really nice to yourself again and again and again and again. A good trick for this, just simply smile. In your practice, when you start to get frustrated, this meditation isn't working out, I can't focus today. Breathe, relax, smile. Ah, so this is the nature of my mind. This is this meditation today. This is what it looks like today. So acceptance. Uh, number six, begin to notice your excuses and take note of your excuses. So just as we were saying the last step, be nice to yourself, start to notice what are your mental patterns? What are the excuses that you come up with? I don't have enough time, I'm too tired, maybe you have young kids, maybe you have to be at work early, whatever it is. Guaranteed you can carve out 
five minutes, you know, guaranteed. That's not a lot of time. And even five minutes a day will completely shift the trajectory of your day. So five minutes, 10 minutes, keep it simple, keep it manageable. Notice your excuses. This is what helps us start to unpack um, what's holding you back. Now, the chances are, if in your meditation practice, you're saying to yourself, I don't have enough time. The way you do one thing is the way you do anything. It's very possible that you're using that excuse, I don't have enough time for other things. Maybe like exercising, I don't have enough time to exercise, or I don't have enough time to cook food for myself, or I don't have enough time to call up my friend and go spend time with them or my family member. Um, so notice where that's showing up in your life, other places in your life. Um, notice how your mind, where the negative voices are and how your mind tends to um, rationalize breaking your commitment with yourself. So one of the biggest byproducts of meditation is that it really builds an, an inner reservoir of self-sufficiency, the resources that we know that we can show up in a positive, powerful way in our lives. And the reason is because you're building consistency in your mind. What happens psychologically is that you start to build self-trust. In other words, you know that you're going to show up for yourself. And so on the deep unconscious level, your psyche starts to rest in the ground of, I know that I'm here for myself. It's like a child and a parent. If the parent is always late to pick them up from practice, um, the parent doesn't, you know, make dinner when, or doesn't do what they say they're going to do, the, the child very quickly starts to lose trust. And it assumes now, or in any relationship, you know this in your family or your romantic relationships, if you lose trust, it takes quite a while to build that back. And you start to assume that this other person is going to show up in that way. The same is true internally. We start to assume that our, we're going to show up ourselves in a certain way. So if you can start to break those patterns of self-sabotage, self um, what are your excuses that are coming up, um, you will start to build a very deep, infrastructure in your unconscious mind, subconscious mind, most important, the root system of your thought patterns, knowing that you will show up for yourself, knowing that you have a place of refuge, that you can access um, stability, you can access positivity, you can access love, you can access forgiveness inside, and you're not looking for someone else outside to um, create that for you. But the way that you do that is to show up for yourself and follow through on your own commitments. That's why I say start small, keep it manageable so you're not overwhelmed. Um, no judgment about your excuses. It's your opportunity to practice self forgiveness. Um, just observe what your excuses are. Just observe the day that you choose not to sit on your cushion. And um, okay, allow it's observation. We want to move from judgment to understanding. So you're beginning to develop compassion, awareness, acceptance, and then, of course, recommit. So rebuild, re-anchor, recommit. So note your excuses, number six. Number seven is find a meditation buddy or get support, you know, build a community. This is probably the best thing to build accountability, and we know this, is that when we have someone else that we have to be accountable to, it helps us show up differently. When someone else is going to hold you to task and say, well, why didn't you sit in meditation today? Um, it's not necessarily that you want to sit and meditate with someone. Uh, it's possible that you might want to meditate with your beloved um, or, you know, a child, you know, your your um, your children or a friend or something like that. But most of the time, meditation you know, is such an internal practice that it's best done on your own. Your practice is probably going to be different than um, anyone else. But get support. Find a buddy. Start meditating with a friend so that you both can um, talk about your experiences. You realize that you know it normalizes your experiences. These are uh, challenges that all of us go through with our mind. But, you know, the first thing I hear is, oh, I can't sit down 
I get bored in my meditation or I, I just can't focus. I can't relax. These are phases of development in your meditation practice. This is normal. This is not abnormal. All of our minds are addictive. All of our minds are neurotic. In other words, always thinking and you are training the muscle of your mind. So find a friend who's also starting their, or wants to start meditating. You can join a Facebook group. We're going to have a meditation 101 Facebook group. You can join that. Yay. Um, jo again, join an online course. Uh, we have our virtual conference coming up. So that'll be in April. You can jump on that. There's going to be a huge community of thousands of people. Um, again, Oprah, Deepak start courses all the time. They're free. Um, Sharon Salzberg is just getting ready to start a 28-day meditation course. I have a great friend, um, uh, Matthew. Uh, I'll find his website, put it up, and tweet it to you guys later today. He does meditation classes all the time. Sally Kempton. You know, there's all kinds of meditation. Just Google meditation mindfulness. Join a group. Find a course. Find a buddy. Maybe it's your partner. It's always good to start these practices together. Reinforce them for each other. And, and then you can also just start to notice how it shifts in your own life. So get some support. Your struggle is normal and it will get easier. It's just the way of it. So that brings us to number eight, which is practice makes perfect. Or what I like to say, perfectly imperfect, because there is no such thing in nature as perfect. That's how our mind gets really obsessive, is because we're always seeking the perfect thing. But practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect means you will get better, like anything in your life. You start to ski, or you start to play tennis, or you start to play chess, or you start cooking, whatever it is you're in the beginner's mind. You're just learning how to do it. You're just developing those skills. So your meditation is skill building in your mind. You are learning how to master your emotions. You are learning how to harness your thoughts. Um, you're training the body how to register deeper states, more relaxation. Um, you're training this nervous system how to tolerate more discomfort and not have to get amped up, but to stay in the relaxation response amidst discomfort. And this takes time. So it says the great um, Ashtangi Patabi Joyce, one of his great mantras and great teachings is very simple. Practice, 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 all is coming. And he does it with an Indian accent. Practice, 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 all is coming. The meaning of that is just keep showing up. And just keep showing up. Just keep doing your practice. Your practice is working on you. Your practice is training the brain. You are literally laying down new neural pathways through your brain tissue, through your physical tissue. So think of your meditation as bicep curls for the muscle of your mind. <clears throat> like you can't just go to the gym one day and expect that you're going to get strong and you're going to stay strong. You have to keep going. You have to keep showing up. You have to continue to go to school. It's why, you know, any, you know, things take time to develop. So just like you don't just eat healthy one day and then expect that you're going to keep seeing those benefits. You don't just make love to your partner once and that's it. Or tell them I love you once and that's it. Continued conditioning, continued experience. So practice, 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 all is coming. So you're training the brain to focus, concentrate, let go, and over time with consistency, you will become more skillful and it will become easier. What happens is you'll start to upgrade your default. So your set point in your mind, your mindfulness will start to raise. It's just like you can shift your metabolism and you can change your set point in your metabolism. If you're working out consistently and eating um, regularly, keeping your blood sugar maintained and balanced, over time, your metabolism will raise, the, the rate of your metabolism will raise, that set point will shift. And that's what we want to do in the mind. So you want to shift that set point in your brain, in your mind, so that you, your default state is one of more awareness, of more mindfulness, of more compassion, of more acceptance, of more patience. And you will start to see those shifts. But 
consistency is the most important thing. As one of my teachers, um, great yogi Baba Haridas uh, would say to us, consistency is more important than you know intensity. So it's better if you can meditate five minutes, six, seven, five, six, seven days a week, than 30 minutes once a week or 30 minutes once every two weeks. So 30 minutes for six days, you know, it's either five, five minutes, six times a week or once for 30 minutes. It's much better to get up every day and do it for five minutes. So start small and work for consistency over intensity. And that'll, that'll help you really shift and train the brain. So number nine, just breathe. So let's just together take a couple deep breaths right now. Place one hand on your, on your chest, on your heart, and then on your lungs, and then place one hand on your belly. So there's a couple different ways to breathe. Most of us breathe very shallow um, up in the upper lungs. So just take that chest breath here. Now bring your breath all the way down to, to really fill and inflate the hand that's on your belly. So you want to push or draw the breath down into the pot of your belly. And then exhale, feel the belly release. Again, inhale, belly expanding. And exhale, belly releasing. So you can release the arms and just start to notice as we move through these last couple tips while you're sitting here, just observe your breath. <clears throat> so even something as simple, and this is something you can do anytime, anywhere to shift into more mindfulness, to shift into a more meditative state is to simply return to the breath. The breath, the, the power of the breath cannot be underestimated or over exaggerated. It is crucial. It is probably the number one thing that will help you change your life is just change your breath, focus on your breath. So there are very scientific reasons for this. We know in modern um, science and neuroscience, um, the, the way that the nervous system works is you have fight or flight response or you have relaxation response. Fight or flight is the, the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the part of your nervous system that is being triggered and it's sympathetic to all the stimuli outside. So that nervous system that's reacting to everything outside of us. So I'm actually sitting right now in a hotel room in Vegas. If I go downstairs, it's a total overload, you know, all the sounds, the lights, the cigarette smoke, the music, the, you know, bells going off. I mean, you can imagine what it's like. And, and that's what we're all going through on a daily basis is this overwhelm to our nervous system, which means that we are in the sympathetic nervous system fight or flight response. There's very specific um, neurochemicals that are released in our nervous system, the stress hormones of adrenaline and cortisol um, that create inflammation in the body. Um, they create distress in the body. Now they're helpful to get us to run away from prey, but that's not where we want to be operating because of all of our electronics, because of everything we're running around doing, our to-do lists, all the demands of the modern day life. Most of us are operating in that sympathetic nervous system most of the time. The parasympathetic nervous system is the relaxation response where the feel-good hormones um, of uh, oxytocin, serotonin are being released into the bloodstream. And they have an immediate effect on our organs, on our tissues, reducing inflammation, creating a more relaxed state, inner state. The way that the, the chemistry is set up in the body, which of those hormones are being released has a direct effect on your mind state. And in fact, the types of thoughts that you're going to be thinking, either going to be more stressful, more analytical, a little more nervous 
energy in the, in the sympathetic nervous system. When we shift into the parasympathetic nervous system, we are more relaxed, we're more open, we're more patient. So the way the breath works is when you start to take deep breaths, you are literally training the physical body, your physiology to shift gears. It's like you're turning off the light. You're saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shift from the sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system to a relaxation response. So your homework for today is three words, relax, breathe, feel. So you're just attuning, you're just tuning in. And this is from Eric Schiffman. He teaches this at the end of his yoga class. Relax, breathe, feel. So this is a way that you can start to insert little moments of meditation or mindfulness into your day at any time. So when I get in my car, before I drive somewhere, relax, breathe, feel, look around, connect, slow it down. When you arrive somewhere in your car, you turn off your car, take, it's, it's, it could be 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, whatever. You can build it up to three breaths. You can build it up to 10 breaths. If you start incorporating five to 10 breaths, a pause in your day at various points, you sit down at your desk, you get to work, Relax, breathe, feel, tune in. So the breath is only ever right here, right now. So the breath, it, uh, the mind tend, the mind is very addictive and it tends to either focus on um, obsessing about the past, analyzing the past, blaming, re, um, reliving certain emotional states, uh, focusing on what's already happened or the mind becomes very addicted to projecting into the future. And this is where we get worry and anxiety. Worry and anxiety are emotions of the future. Depression is um, depression, blame, sadness is an emotion of the past. Emotions are not bad. I'm very big on emotional intelligence, emotional field as a psychotherapy intern, but you want to make sure that you're beginning to master your emotions and you're just because you think a thought it's not true not doesn't mean it's true so your breath will help you discern and cut away all the addictive tendencies of thinking about the future or obsessing about the past so the breath brings you immediately right here right now because the breath is never anywhere except right now it can't be by definition so this breath is in this moment and so when you place your attention on the breath you're placing your attention right here right now on what is and that's one of the uh, functions one of the byproducts one of the aims of meditation is to help us build what's called clear perception so we are actually seeing and focusing on what is not what we're projecting we think might be not what we're assuming about someone else's experience, but clear perception, what is. So the breath will help you part the waters, like a parting of the Red Sea. Um, from the past and the future, you wanna carve out the now. And that's what the breath will help you do. So just breathe, that's your homework for today. Relax, breathe, feel. And notice how it starts to shift your perception. So number 10, we're at our last top 10 uh, tips for how to start meditating. This is one of my favorites, and it's called Start a Benefit Book, which means that you're, at, and I like to have a little meditation notebook. So it's just a little journal to sort of uh, keep track of your experience. Maybe you write, you know, when you sit down every day, you might write one or two words about what your meditation was like. It's really more just to register. Again, it's not about analyzing or um, you know deciphering. It's just about noting it, just about registering it. So the benefit book is noticing how you feel after your meditation. So we're gonna do a one minute meditation right after this. And yeah, it's a little bonus. You get a little meditation in here in this class um, and all of our classes. 
all of my meditation classes, but register how you feel. So let's just do it right now. So go ahead and close your eyes. Sit tall, tip number um, one, get comfortable. So if you're in a chair, feet on the floor, might be sit, if you're lying down, sit up. So number three, sit tall, start small, eyes are closed. We're starting small, it's just a one minute meditation. So simply relax the shoulders, lengthen the spine. And we're going to just focus on the breath for one minute. I'm gonna time it out. You can turn your gaze inward. It's not necessarily physiological, but you're shifting your awareness and inward focus of the mind. So just scan the body, notice what you notice, any sensation. And now just placing your attention on your breath. Just notice breathing in. And breathing out. Just feel your body soften. Breathing in. And breathing out. So you're not trying to change the breath at all. You're just observing. Breathing in. And breathing out. One more round. So you notice the thought rising, notice it falls away, it shifts. Come back to the breath. Now before you open your eyes, just observe any minor shift from the beginning of that to how you feel right now. So I can definitely feel a marked shift in the energy around me, a little bit calmer, a little quieter. And now just very quietly, softly blink your eyes open and just look around the room, notice colors, shapes. Just notice what appeals to you, what doesn't appeal to you. And bring your attention back. And again, just observe one, two, three things about how you feel different. Benefit, maybe a little slow down, maybe a little calmer. I'm talking slower, I can feel it. <laughs> I'm out of the sympathetic in the parasympathetic, more spacious. So I really encourage you, by the way, that was an added bonus. It was actually 90 seconds, a little more than a minute. I wanted to keep going. I, I could feel you guys on the other end just wanting to drop in a little deeper on that meditation. So observe the benefits, make note of them, and what that will help you do is to register why you actually do want to meditate and how it does actually shift your life, um, your focus. So that's something that you can bring back to your meditation buddy. You can drop it online. Just say, okay, this is the benefit of my practice today. When you notice those excuses creeping up, you have that sort of negative voice or that self-saboteur voice. You also now have the voice of the benefits. So they can talk and have a conversation like the devil and the angel and you can say, oh, actually this is why I might want to sit down and meditate. So I know you think I don't have enough time, but I do actually have 90 seconds that I can carve out of my day. Thank you guys so much. Those are the top 10. Um, we're, we're, I know we're a little short on time, but I definitely want to turn it over to you, Matt, and, and questions that you guys have. Um, there's so much more. This is such a rich topic. I'm really committed to offering you guys practical tools and support to help you incorporate a daily meditation practice because it will change your life. It will radically um, shift your awareness, your relationships, communication, um, all, of, all of those challenges that we all struggle with. Mm. 
Thank you so much, Ashley. Just absolutely mm -hmm. incredible. Um, Emma asks, how do you prevent falling asleep when you meditate? Good Especially, question. I think, and I think going along with that, I think, as you said, first thing in the morning, I think that there's a tendency mm -hmm. towards that. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Very common question. Needs to be on the FAQ list. Um, <laughs> frequently asked questions list. Uh, well, you can be like a Zen monk and you can sit on a bed of nails. That would help. <laughs> but most of us are probably not going to do that. So, um, again, one of the best things, well, for example, if you're going to meditate in the morning, which I always do, I find, you know, I hope that I get to a place where I'm meditating in the morning and at night for half an hour. That's my aim right now. But for the moment, it's in the morning. You do, there are things that you can do that are really helpful. There are a lot of yoga techniques that wake up your system. So I wouldn't recommend just getting out of bed, walking over to your you know, meditation cushion and sitting down. You actually need to get the body in, and into an alert state. So there's a few things that I highly recommend. I'm gonna do a vlog on this because um, I actually wanna show people these, these techniques. And these are in the yoga tradition, these are called Shat Karma, which is, it's a cleansing practice. So what happens when we sleep is that our body accumulates excess. Um, it's part of the healing process, it's part of the regeneration process, is that our body, if you, know, if you have uh, an overly acidic diet, or maybe you had you know, meat or alcohol, or you know, anything like that, or you're just stressed, your body will, will process that by turning it into mucus, so it looks like bile in the body. Ways that that shows up are a film on our eyes, so it's the sleep in our eyes. You'll notice if you're, you know, like last night I had a glass of wine and, and a few bites of um, steak, and I today woke up and there was like crust in my eyes. I could feel that difference because uh, I don't usually, you know, eat like that. Not a big deal. It's just how the body processes it. No, just to note that. But regardless, when we sleep, we build up this ama, this excess, and it's a, it's basically like a film that creates that lethargy or heaviness. So when you first wake up, you want to clear that. One of the best ways to do this, especially for meditation, is called eye washing. So you just go to the sink and like you probably wash your face in the morning and brush your teeth. Those are good things to do before you meditate, You're waking up, clearing out. Mm -hmm. But eye washing is great. Um, so you just take your palms underwater, get a little cup of water in your palms, and then lean down and place your eye there and blink the water up into your eyes so that it flushes out across the surface of your eye. And then you do it on both sides. I usually do it twice on both sides just to really, and you can feel the charge and it just clears the eyes and it really clears also um, in the brain, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, it starts to stimulate that. So that's a really good way to wake up. That's a, a yogic technique. Um, tongue scraping also is a, is a way to, cl to clear that excess. Mm -hmm. So you get a tongue scraper at um, any health food store and just clear off the film on the uh, surface of the tongue. And then the third one that I really, well there's th four, four uh, two more. Skin brushing is excellent, dry skin brushing, which is just get a loofah or you can get uh, a brush and natural fiber, you know, uh, loofah brush. And you brush and you want to um, brush your skin towards your heart so that you're increasing circulation towards your heart and then your heart pumps that blood around the body. So if you skin brush, you'll start to all over your body, um, you know, almost every surface of your body, skin brush will wake up the circulation. It will help wake you up before your meditation. And then the fourth one is called Jala Neti, which is uh, a little water, maybe a little salt water that you pour through the nose one side it goes in, the other side it comes out. You just tilt your head a little bit. Every single morning I do this, not just when I, you know, I'm feeling congested. And this is one of the best ways to really wake up the mind. And you can feel all of the meridians in the brain itself. Literally, I can feel like it's almost like all that water or that stimulus is, is I can feel it going into my brain and starting to activate so that it wakes you up. So those four things are really good to do before you meditate so that you're literally bringing your body into and your mind into an alert state. Um, other than that, definitely sitting tall, 
Again, you can sit against a wall or in a chair so you have that straight spine. And then the last one is, all right, if you fall asleep, no judgment, you know, probably you're going to wake yourself up, come back to your breath, come back to your meditation, no judgment. So it's not uncommon. Thank you. Great question. Uh, excellent question. Thank you. And, and Emma follows up with thank you. Very hel helpful. Smiley face. Also, come to Croatia. Would love to have you here and meet you in person. Yay! So I you need to go, go to, to Croatia. Croatia. <laughs> I, it's on the top of my list, girl. It's at the top of my I've been hearing very good things about Croatia. I'm, I'm ready to come. <laughs> Fantastic. So, Ashley, I think we want to give everyone tools within this hour to be able to, as we said, get started. So if you were to name two asanas or two postures mm. to prep the body to be able to sit comfortable and even have a stronger straighter spine in meditation what would you say those would be i love that i just sat up straighter when you said that um well i mean you can, the sun salutations i mean that's more than two postures but you can't go wrong like if you this is another great and this is literally what they were created for to greet the sun in the morning mm. it's namaskar means name salutation it's a saluting of the sun. So the sun salutations were specifically created to wake up and flush out the body. So you're moving the spine in one direction, you're moving it in the opposite direction um, three times during each sun salutation. And so that pose and then counter pose flexion and extension of the spine is really gonna help you condition your whole body. Again, all those erector muscles along the spinal column um, as well as flush out, increase circulation, flush out the ama that's in the organs, that's in the digestive tract, um, just the natural lethargy that we wake up with. So if you can get, if you can add to your practice, this is a great little sadhana in the morning, even just three sun salutations, even a half sun salutation, um, if it's too much for you, if it's a little challenging for you, you can't you know, do the cobra or the up dog, then just a half citation of reaching the arms up overhead, folding forward, forward bend, coming up halfway, folding back in, coming all the way back up to standing. So you do that three, five times, um, you'll really be charged and ready. In fact, the whole reason that asanas are created, the literally the function in the yogic practice for the physical postures is to help us be able to sit in meditation with more awareness, with more alertness. It's to help the condition the body, the physical structure of the body, to stay awake and alert and be comfortable when you're sitting in meditation. So do a little bit of asana and it's gonna help you open up your hips, your knees, your lower back, strengthen the spine so that you can sit for five, 10, 30, 40 minutes, um, not to overwhelm you, keep it small, but to sit and be comfortable. And then the real practice of yoga is working with the nature of the mind, as we know. So do some asana for sure. But just two postures, I would say um, down dog for sure, a downward facing dog, five breaths, get the whole body opening up. Mm -hmm. and, and then I would just say standing, like reach all the way up, stand upright, arms overhead, you can reach it up, that's right or add a forward bend in there, just coming up, coming down. You can bend the knees, you can separate the feet hip distance to make it comfortable all the way up and then forward bend down and then coming back up. That plus down dog. Down dog is great, especially in the morning because your head is below your heart. So you're gonna start to get more blood flow into the head, which is what we want, to, a little inversion. Yeah, good question. Thank you. So um, I think as we come to a close here, Ashley, are there any final thoughts that you have? Uh, I just want to really encourage you all to meditate because it can, it, it will change your life. And again, it's going to, you know, most importantly, it's building that resource inside. It's really building that strength and inner confidence and knowing resiliency that whatever curveball life throws you and it will throw you curveballs people get divorced people are going to die you're going to have financial struggles at various points in your life people might get sick like this is just the reality of, of our human life so how do we deal with it it's our responsibility 
to build the skills to help us um, thrive even in those challenging experiences. So please do start meditating. Um, reach out to me. I'm here for you. You can go to facebook.com backslash Ashley Turner Yoga. Go to my website, ashleyturner.org. If you want to get on the email list for our upcoming viral, uh, virtual conference on meditation, Meditation 101. Oh, that's my phone going off. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you can just, I'm in the hotel room. I don't know how to stop it. Um, we can be mindful through it. So you go to ashleyturner.org backslash meditation 101. ashleyturner.org backslash meditation 101. And you can get on the email list for the virtual conference we have coming up. But reach out, please ask me more questions on Facebook, and um, I'll be online all day answering your questions. Thank you so much. Mm, thank you, Ashley. If you enjoyed this class, as Ashley said, please check out her website. Please check out her virtual conference, April 21st through the 25th, Meditation 101. So yeah. thank you so much, audience, for taking this time. And we encourage you to take a moment right now. Think about your number one favorite big idea from today's class. And most importantly, how you can apply it to your life starting today. So thank you so much, yeah. Ashley, for sharing your wisdom. Thank you. I just want to say on our meditation conference, we have amazing, I have amazing mm. masters from neuroscientists from Harvard, UCLA, and then great spiritual teachers. So it's going to be just some of the greatest wisdom, you know, pulled together. So definitely jump on that with us. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much, Entheos. Thank you, Thank Ashley. Thank you all. Thank <laughs> you all. Have a great day. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>